government secret service men of the old west working undercover on dangerous special assignments courageous resourceful fighters for law and honor the cowboy g-men in rawhiders starring russell hayden as pat gallagher and jackie coogan as tony crockett By 1885, lumbering and gold mining had brought a wave of prosperity to the great Washington territory of the Northwest. This is Jim Sutton's saloon in the town of Dunlock, where miners came to spend their money. And every week, thousands of their dollars went for lottery tickets supposed to pay fortunes to the winners. Give me a ticket on number 10. Anybody else? Too bad, boys, the house wins. There were other lotteries, plenty of them, with none more popular than that of Pierre Latour, who catered to the lumberjacks of the back country. And with so much at stake, a fight was inevitable, a fight to decide who should be top man among the lottery operators. is the story of that fight and the part that was played in it by men of the Federal Secret Service. Mr. Latour. Oui, monsieur. That is my name. I'm John Carver. Looks like you're still running a lottery. Anybody can see that, my friend. You would perhaps like to buy a ticket. Nobody's buying any more lottery tickets around here, Latour. Why do you say that? We're closing you up. No more lotteries in Washington Territory. You, Parkinson. And who, Monsieur Carver, are you to close me up? Federal Secret Service. The government doesn't want any more lotteries in territorial areas. So, you are of the government. And what if I don't want to close up this lottery of mine? You could get hurt real bad. That is, unless you talk to Jim Sutton first. Sutton? But he has a lottery in his saloon. That's right. And if you want to stay in business, you'll go and talk to him. Papa, what about Monsieur Sauton? I will go into town and talk with him. If he thinks he can make me close up my lottery, he is crazy. Mr. Sutton, I wish to speak with you. Hello, Latour. These two gentlemen, Carver and Jewel, they say they are gentlemen of the government. That's right, they are. They come to my place and they say I must close up my lottery. Well, you know how it is, Pierre. The government don't like lotteries. No. And what does the government think of this lottery? Well, maybe I have influence. So you bribe these gentlemen of the government. All right. If I must pay to stay in business, I pay. How much? It isn't that easy, Latour. Well, why do you say that? 
This lottery business has got to be a pretty big deal. There's six of us in business. I figure we've got to organize with one man as top dog. Mm -hmm. So from now on, you're working for us. No, monsieur, not me. The wheel I run is an honest wheel. For the others, I do not know. For me, no. I warn you, Latour, everyone comes in. Monsieur, I will not be your man, nor anyone else's man. I've told you the deal. Either you run your game for us, or you don't run it at all. No, Monsieur Sato. I run my lottery for me, Pierre Latour. That thing all set to go? Yeah. Latour always stocks up with supplies when he comes to town. We'll take care of him while he's here. What is that? It's a special kind of cigar. This stuff is acid. There's a piece of copper in the middle of this pipe. This acid's gonna eat through that into a mixture of sugar and some stuff called chlorate of potash. That makes a fire that's gonna blow the rest of the mixture to blazes because the rest of the mixture is nitroglycerin. I get it. We'll put this in the tour's wagon under the seat. How soon will it blow? I figure we'll get just about a quarter of a mile out of town. All right, go ahead, use it. because he wouldn't go along with a man who intended to become the boss of this vast territory that was on the verge of statehood. Other men who refused to play Sutton's game until word got around that you couldn't beat corruption in Washington Territory because federal secret service men could be bribed. Then, several weeks later, two strangers rode into the territory. The Federal Secret Service was acting to combat the rumors against its integrity and good name. The two men were Gallagher and Crockett. Their orders, find out the trouble, eliminated. operate the lottery? Yes. Did anyone ever threaten you because of it? Oh, yes. Some government men. Who was he? Why should I tell you? We happen to be government men ourselves, miss. And we'd like to know some more about this fellow who claims to be one. So... So... You are government men. You must also be thieves and murderers. Whew. Never trust a lady with an axe in her hand. Get out of here, both of you. Now, wait a minute. You said a man came in here and identified himself as a government man. Who was he? Who are you? And you really are government men? Yes, ma'am. We're after this man you were talking about. He was an imposter. Then I have made bad mistake. And for me, it was almost fatal. Do you think you'd recognize this man again if you saw him? Mm, I will know him when I see him again. And when I do... I'll feel sorry for him. My father ran an honest lottery. And then this man, he told my father that if he wanted to keep his lottery business, he would have to go into town and talk to Mr. Sultan. And then when he went, he was blown up in his wagon. I'm sorry. Would you go to town with us and identify this man? Why should I? 
Now look, miss, we've got nothing against you or your lottery, but we want to find this man who's impersonating a federal officer. And we might be able to clear up the killing of your father. All right. I'll go with you. I'll change my clothes. That's better. Whew. Nice looking cop one you have here. Is that all you have an eye for? Or sis? No, not exactly. You are quite a man, Mr. Gallagher. Oh, I should have noticed that right from the beginning. Hey, Pat, maybe you'd rather I didn't go along on this ride with you. Quiet. chances on your safety. I want you to stand by this window. If we meet a man that fits that description, we'll bring him by, and you give us the nod. Understand? All right, Mr. Pat. So, you are now thinking of my safety. Why? I'd do it for anyone. Yes, but now you do it for me. Come back soon, Mr. Gallagher. Tour girl just came out of town. Where is she? At the hotel. Got a couple of riders with her, too. They won't stay with her forever. You know where she is, take care of her. Not the back. Sutton? Yes, sir. What's on your mind? My name's Gallagher, Government Secret Service. Crockett, same business. Yeah, what do you want with me? Looking for a man by the name of Carver. Know him? Why should I? He's supposed to be working with you. All right, so he works with me. So what? What's he do? He runs the lottery. Report came in he's been impersonating a federal officer. You know anything about that? No, I don't. A man by the name of Latour was told by Carver that he couldn't run his lottery without your permission. Then Latour was killed or murdered. How about that? Wait just a second. Why should you question me like this? Carver works with me, that's all. Why should you ask me questions what he does in his spare time? I'd like to find out a few things, that's all. Do you mind if we look around? No, oh, look around all you want. I have nothing to hide. Thanks. You. That's 
right? I've got a message for you. A message? You know, you've been pretty stubborn about this lottery deal. Stubborn? If that is what you call it, I keep on being stubborn. Grab her. We figure you need a lesson. A lesson? We're gonna teach you it ain't smart to go against us. And you're gonna learn the hard way from this. Well, you know what we found out in there? Yeah, you know, absolutely nothing. We'd better get that Latour girl out of town fast. I should not have believed you, just like the rest of them. Who did this, Carver? Just leave me alone. You are so imposters. I am going back to the trading post. I am going to keep on running my father's lottery. Now, wait a minute. If your boss sends anyone else to see me, they will be met like this. <laughs> That'll teach you to keep your nose out of other people's business. That'll teach you to keep your guard up. <laughs> when it comes to women. So how did you hurt yourself when you hit that girl? What's it to you? I just don't like men that beat women, that's all. Wander off, nosy, before I plant this on your chin. Would you like to try? All right, I will. <laughs> And I want the answers now. What's your name? Your real name? Carver. If it makes any difference. Why'd you beat up that girl? Hey, you. Keep out of this. All right, Carver, why'd you beat up that girl? Who says I did? What do you know about the killing of her father? I didn't even know her father. Then why'd you beat her up? The girl claims that you came into her father's place and impersonated a federal officer. What about that? You got the wrong man, mister. You're being pretty high and mighty about this, Mr. Lawman. This girl's got so much to say about Carver here. Why isn't she here to say it in front of him? She'll say it in front of him. Because we're taking him out there to see her right now. Come on, Carver. Explosion planted? Right under his saddle. They'll get about halfway to Latour's place and it'll blow up sky high. I want to see this. Come on, let's follow. about something. What? What about Carver when that bomb blows up? 
He knows what we're doing. It's up to him to keep clear of it. We've got a man here under arrest. And we want you to identify him. What about the bomb? Did you get enough acid in it? Sure, I did. It ought to blow up sky high any second. Miss Latour, is this one of the men that beat you up? Yes, that is one of them. What about it, Carver? Miss Latour said you came here impersonating a federal officer. I don't know nothing about it. So I got liquored up and pushed the girl around a little bit. You can't put anything else on me. Why can't we talk about this inside? What's the matter, Carver? Something making you nervous? Something, uh... Like this? One of you planted this on my horse. You must have taken me for an awful jest. Throw that thing outside before it blows us to pieces. You used one of those to kill the tour, didn't you, Carver? I didn't have nothing to do with killing the tour. No, then who did? I don't know. Will you throw that thing outside? What about Sutton, Carver? He was in on it, wasn't he? I don't know. Sutton hired you to impersonate a government officer, didn't he? Yeah, now what about it? All right, all right, I was working with Sutton. And you used one of these to kill the tour? Yes. Now will you throw it outside before it kills every one of us? You can relax now, Carver. This isn't going to hurt anybody. What do you mean? I poured the acid and the nitro out back on the trail. What is it, Pat? It's a type of an acid bomb. We ran into these before in our business. Yeah, we know all about them. So this is what killed my father. That's right. Now we're going back into town and arrest Mr. Sutton. You ain't going anywhere. Sutton. You got here just in time. Mr. I'm sorry to go, Joan. Maybe we meet again sometime, yes? Maybe. Hey, you better make her promise you something first, Pat. What's that? No more axes. Oh, no, no, no more axes. Goodbye, Joan. Goodbye, Mr. Gallagher. ever do without them? Well, we probably wouldn't have sore noses or black eyes. <laughs> 